Hey, we're back at Specialized World Headquarters. We're in the Retool Skunk Works division where bodies fit bikes, bikes fit body. Hanging out with Aaron Post. Talking today about cleat setup because when I go into the internet and try to set up cleats, man, it feels like a dark hole. Are there any basic rules or how do I think about setting up the cleats on my bike? Because what's happening now is I'm seeing people get back into this. Yeah. They're transferring off of their big flat downhill bear trap pedals wanting to get a little bit more efficiency, mm -hmm. but I don't think we even have an idea where to go. I mean, there's a bunch of holes in my shoe. Yep. I can go la lateral and medial. Mm -hmm. I can go front and back. Is there any basic rules about this besides yep. working with an expert? If you're trying to do this at home, there are certainly some things that you can use as guidelines to get into a relatively safe position. Now, if you didn't have clips, you were putting your foot wherever you wanted. So you could kind of find the position that feels most natural. You might be doing that in really soft shoes though too. So there's some other things that come into play when you're dealing with just. And I'll just say yeah. that you have said multiple times oh, to me, yeah. I should start by making sure that my saddle height is right and dialed. For sure. Then that way I'm not putting my foot somewhere where I need to take up side. Cause for example, we see little kids riding in the neighborhood They've grown tall and, and their heels are basically dragging on the dragon or seats too tall. That's you're right, dancing that's on right. your toes. Okay. I'm assuming saddle height, you've got it in the ballpark, it's in a good spot. Now we're gonna focus on this more fixed system where you're actually locking your foot into position. So it does become more important to make sure that it is in a biomechanically correct position. When we look at our foot from a bike fit perspective, I'm really focused around the first metatarsal joint and the fifth. Show me where that is on, yeah. on this foot. So ball of your foot, that big ball up on your big toe that your first metatarsal joint right here, little ball of your foot on the outside fifth metatarsal. Those can vary from person to person. They can be very far apart or very close together, but I like to think of those as the goalposts. And if I were to set up a cleat, I would want the middle of that cleat, effectively the middle of that pedal, to be somewhere in between those goalposts. Oh, because the fifth and the first may be at a little bit of an angle. Yeah. So they're, they're diagonal, thank goodness. Yeah. Right? It's very strange. But what that does is it gives, it gives me at least a rough zone to the For angle. sure. Okay. Yeah. So sh show me here. What is, I mean, right. So like you can kind of see where yeah. my big toe is. You know, here at Retool, we got a lot of these little dots. So you could use a sticker. You can use a marker if you wanted to use a marker on your own shoe. That's your choice. But you locate the ball of the foot, find the center, and just kind of mark it like that. And then you can do the same thing out here on your fifth metatarsal, that little ball of your foot, wherever that sticks out the most, mark it. And then when you're actually clipped in, you could look straight down and see if the middle of the pedal spindle is falling in between those oh, two landmarks. Such a good guideline. I've never heard that before. Yeah. You know, usually it's about, uh, you know, and you can see my setup is that setup, right? I'm there. I am in the middle, and it's weird how you guys set these up for me, right? I I hope we got it. Right. <laughs> you nailed it, nailed it. But uh, you know, usually it's it's people are talking about feel or this is the it's a maximum crank them all the way back. Yeah. There's there are reasons. There's advantages, but simultaneous disadvantages from let's, going to either extreme. Let's start with the idea that I have normative range of function, right? Because I yeah. see, like, we could be solving mechanical problems by adjusting the foot to mm -hmm. change something going on in the hip, right? Yeah. I, I get that. Or I'm having a knee problem, I can adjust and unload the foot a little bit mm -hmm. as I come around so I'm not so flexed. Yeah. But as a rough guideline, I really appreciate that. And it would be interesting to see, even if I'm on just the bear trap, you know, where I put that spindle, right? In the, it's yeah. probably right in the middle of there most mm -hmm. of the time. Most of the time. The self-selection is still very powerful, right? Uh, when I, It's almost like your brain knows how to generate more force. It, it wants to take the easy way out, right? <laughs> it wants to do the least amount of work for the most amount of output. I love it. Uh, when I'm just looking at it from a purely mechanical standpoint, you've got this highly flexible foot, lots of moving parts in here. If you think about that pedal, reason why I like the first metatarsal as a landmark is if I've got the pedal like way out on the front of my toes, well, I'm passing over another joint. 
So I have to work extra hard to stabilize this then extra long lever that passes over this other articulation point. And that's going to mean I'm doing a lot more work, but not to generate power, just to hold my foot in place. So my foot doesn't just melt off the pedal. Right. Right, which may be one of the reasons people's feet cramp. I mean, who knows? I mean, people's bodies are yep. miraculous when they come to the bike, right? Conversely, when we're looking at the fifth metatarsal, why I want to kind of keep it in front of that range is the more we reduce the size of the foot lever, the less articulation we have in the ankle. So the, the body can adapt less throughout the entire pedaling circle. For example, as I'm coming up over the top of the pedal stroke, I'm trying to get my hips and my knee into an ideal position to start engaging and push power into early. the pedals. I want that early. Early, I can kind of get my body more ready maybe by dropping my heel a little bit. So if I go too far back, I minimize that articulation at the ankle, which might minimize my ability to start pushing power real fast over the top of the pedal stroke. Amazing, perfect. Look, I can't recommend, if you're not in clip-ins, you know, because you feel like you're going to fall and crash and burn, mm -hmm. that's very reasonable, or you're hucking. But if you're doing more and more time on the bike as base work, especially in spinning, right, you're, you're at home, you're in the garage, we've got a lot going on in California right now, people are back in their homes doing a lot of base work, it's worth looking at getting in some clipping pedals. Absolutely. I just the efficiency is, is ridiculous. Comma, here's a simple way. Thank you so much, that's great.